Hurricane Ian's surge and rainfall had flushed hundreds of tons of salt and pollution and organic matter right into the Gulf of Mexico. This is why so many beach advisories are in effect right now. And while we continue to clean up from the impacts of Hurricane Ian, that material could have long term impacts on our local estuaries. Chris Fox for meteorologist Sandra Shipley spoke with the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation about what those impacts could look like. Andrew. Yeah, while we're all enjoying time near the water here in southwest Florida, it might be some time before we can fully enjoy that water again. Now, both short term and long term health impacts to our local waterways is still in question. I spoke to Dr. Eric Milbrandt. He's the Marine Laboratory Director at the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation. He says that the size of the area impacted by Hurricane Ian adds so many different variables to our overall health to the water. We don't really even know. Um, there's been a few examples of uh, the, the Indonesian tsunami, the tsunami in Japan, for example. These are widespread um, events affecting uh, people and coastlines and the, the, the subsequent uh, path uh, cascade of, of things that, that can happen can be uh, varied. In the short term, Dr. Milbrandt says the concern is the increase in organic material released into the estuary. The leaf, uh, the leaves that blew off the mangroves and all the other trees uh, in the in the area are all in the water decomposing, producing a lot of oxygen demand by bacteria. And so one thing that we're we're sort of seeing and and at least initially are low oxygen areas. What we don't want to see are areas with no oxygen. That lack of oxygen can cause fish kills, something we saw earlier this summer from decaying algae blooms. And speaking of algae blooms, Dr. Milbrandt says the increase in nutrients in the water could lead to more algae blooms, including red tide. And while the sample size is small, the year after Charlie and Irma, Southwest Florida saw major red tidal blooms. We had large, long-lasting um, red tide blooms, which are algae that um, that bloom and have caused respiratory irritation. So, you know, that's not a formula. That sample size is fairly small over a 20 year period. Um, and it's very difficult to predict, um, you know, when such a large disturbance happens, um, what, what's going to happen. But certainly the conditions would be favorable for some kind of uh, bloom development. And those blooms not only affect the water quality, Dr. Milbrandt says the pollution added to the estuaries will likely impact the smallest parts of the food chain, like shrimp, oysters, and clams. All of the things that uh, are dependent on our mangrove ecosystems and the dropping leaves and the decomposition that happens, those contaminants will are mobilized now. And so, um, yeah, there's there's going to be uh, some some of that getting distributed throughout the food web. And despite the negative impacts, Dr. Milbrandt says our local ecosystems will adapt to its new normal. We think that um, the barrier islands will adapt and adjust uh, and the ecology will adapt and adjust to, to these new um, new areas and new underwater areas, um, although it'll take time. Yeah, Dr. Milbrand says the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation is still assessing their scientific equipment after Hurricane Ian, but they do have plenty of data ahead of the storm. So that's a strong sample size that then they can now do research up against to find out how bad things could get. Reporting in studio, meteorologist Andrew Shipley, Fox 4. All right, Andrew.